start. Mute myself. Fantastic. Um, I'll, I'll stop uh, several times um, during uh, our little chat this afternoon, but just feel free to come off mute um, and ask any questions. Um, the, you should be fine to have your video on or off, whatever um, you want to do. And I'll share my screen at one stage as well, because um, I've got something that I think that will be useful for us to have a look at. Uh, so kia ora, for those that I haven't met before, um, I'm Fiona MacDonald, and I used to teach um, outdoor education many moons ago, so I did get to use a lot of these standards um, when I was teaching. Um, and since then, I've done a bunch of work for EONS, um, I do a bunch of auditing and some assessment for Skills Active um, as well. And last year, I picked up um, this project, coordinating uh, 10 teachers from around the country um, reviewing uh, what turned out to be over 60 outdoor rec unit standards. Uh, so it was, a, it was a massive piece of work and I'm not sure that any of us knew exactly how big a piece of work when um, we signed up at the start of the process. Uh, so a lot of time has passed and um, you've hopefully all seen the standards either when they were out for consultation or off the email. Um, that you got um, when you registered um, and had a chance to look at those overviews. Um, I thought today, seeing some of you probably didn't have a chance to um, catch up on the last update I did, I'd just start from the beginning very quickly um, and give you a bit of background to where the process started and why and the things we considered along the way. Um, so first of all, most of these standards were way overdue for their reviews. Um, some of them, you know, 10 years plus. Um, so we had to align them with the current industry expectations, make sure they matched up with the NZQF levels and also um, provided a pathway and um, matched in underneath the level four and above standards that have been created since these ones were written. Um, we were aiming to create lots of flexibility for the creation of programs to make sure that um, you could have a program that was all unit standards or a combination of achievement standards and unit standards um, at all three levels. Um, so we have increased the number of level one standards um, to make sure there is unit standard offering across all the levels. And again, um, trying to align the level two, uh, one and two standards into a coherent pathway to level three and four qualifications. Um, some key changes uh, in line with the NCA review, which was happening or is continuing to happen, uh, but was starting to happen. Um, when this process happened, uh, we've looked at um, aligning the credits and adjusting credits so you can build programs um, up to that 20 credit limit um, that the NCA review is um, putting forward. Uh, we've looked at removing um, duplication and assessment to really try and reduce assessment load for students and for teachers. Um, and we've done that in a number of ways. Um, one of the key ways was creating the four key, uh, four core unit standard areas across the three levels uh, to uh, pull out lots of the duplication that uh, did exist across all the different contexts um, before this process. And that has meant the context unit standards have really become very practical unit standards. Um, we also created a multi-day trip unit standard that can be assessed in any context. Uh, again, to try and increase the flexibility and reduce down the, num the amount of duplication. Uh, so the idea is that the cores and context unit standards can be combined in any sort of a way. Uh, the cause could stand alone, the cause could be assessed across the whole year's work, they could be tagged with a context, all sorts of ways, and then you can pull achievement standards um, into that process of, as well. I think one of the key things hopefully now is that 
the unit standards are smaller um, is that we can get back to that idea that programs can contain a much broader content and much broader learning than just the context of the learning standards. Um, so um, we're not being forced to assess everything we do. Um, and we can focus on the local environment, the rules, resources we have and the, our student needs to create really broad programs um, that aren't completely driven by these big assessments and assessment load across the year. Um, are there any questions on that sort of very broad, quick outline of sort of where we've got to so far um, at a very high level? You can chuck them in chat if you want to, or just unmute and ask anything at any stage. Um, I thought I would share now um, my screen and show you just an overview that might be quite useful. So this shows the different domains, uh, proposed titles and the credit values. Um, and this is the first lot of contexts. Um, some things to note here is um, because we stripped out basically any duplication out of these standards, their uh, credit value has dropped right down. Um, but if you put them with a context, Oh, sorry, if you put them with a core unit standard, you're still looking at uh, five to six credits. Um, but it also allows you lots of uh, flexibility. Mm. Any questions on what's sitting in this overview before I shift down the page? Um, now, I did have a couple of questions in the context about um, the ski and snowboard context and why it isn't in here. Um, it was originally at the start of the project, but uh, the whole suite or the whole um, domain of ski and snowboard was being reviewed at the same time. Um, so it made more sense for those units um, at level two and three to go back out into that review. Um, that's been done and they've been out for consultation. Um, they're now really nicely aligned with the um, levels that um, ski fields use in their um, development programs. Um, so hopefully they'll be still very useful. Um, the uh, cross-country skiing ones, um, a couple of those got uh, or have been put up for, um, for being expired because they had zero usage. Um, but the basic um, cross country ones still exist, just not the skating standards. Um, Waka Armour um, was another question about why that wasn't in here. Um, that's because it, those standards aren't up for a review until next year because they're quite new. Um, and so at that stage, they'll be looked at with this same lens when they come up for review. Um, rafting um, was the other standard that was in here originally. There's only um, a level two rafting um, standard and rafting has been reviewed as well. So that went back over to rafting. Um, we have written the level two demonstrate paddling skills on moving water um, with there's one wee tweak in there um, that I think we'll do after consultation um, that will mean that you can actually use that uh, for rafting um, if that's a more suitable standard. And of course, you could you can use rafting as a context for any of these core standards. Uh, one other thing I'll mention up in here, I had lots of questions around consent to assess and how these changes um, will affect consent to assess. Um, and now might be a good time to address those questions. Um, 
so where it's just a change of version, so it's the same number and all that's changing is a ver version, uh, then you don't need to do anything. If you hold consent for that number now, you will hold consent for it afterwards. Uh, and it doesn't matter if it's moved up and down levels and how much the content has changed within that standard. So what I'm trying to do, or what I have tried to do, is keep the same numbers wherever that's possible. Um, these standards still need to go back through NZ or to NZQA, um, and that's the kind of thing they check. So some of that might change in that process, but at this stage, we've tried to keep as many existing numbers as we can, even when they've changed level, you will still have consent for that standard if you hold it now. Um, you'll see there's some new numbers um, in this uh, table, just represented by the name and a number. They will turn into a number and through the NZQA process. Um, they just give it a random number. And those ones will require schools um, to get consent to assess. Unless um, you've had consent for a very long time and you hold it as a domain. Um, so some schools historically would have got, um, for example, canoeing and kayaking as a domain um, at each level. And if that's the case and that's the consent you hold, then you'll automatically get consent for that new kayaking unit. Uh, most schools now, um, and definitely going forward, any school that's um, come in recently will hold consent for particular units. Um, and if that's the case for you, then you'd need to um, get consent for that new unit. There's a whole plan that's developed once the units are approved through NZQA. There's a whole consent to assess plan that's part of this review that looks at um, where the changes have been, what the effects for um, schools will be, and how to um, mitigate those and move schools on to making sure they have consent for what they need. Um, so that plan will come out after these come out of NZQA. And, and definitely Skills Act have seen um, pretty keen to make it as easy as possible to sort out the kind of the changes that have come because of this review um, to people's consent to assess. Um, any questions on that while we're kind of playing in that consent to assess space? Sorry, I've got a question. Okay, go. Um, so should we wait before we start looking at, you know, looking at this and trying to get consent to assess? We shouldn't, yeah, we should basically wait. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, just wait. Um, that plan will come out. Uh, you'll have heaps of time because these will go into NZQA through their process, come out, and then um, we're hoping that we'll sort of be halfway through this year or, you know, still with lots of time, hopefully in this year. Um, we'd really like to have uh, everything in place, you know, the consent to assess, the standards on the framework and the resources sorted for a start for next year. Um, but you will have until the end of 2023 to use the existing standards. Um, so yeah, I'd say don't be panicking about consent to assess now. Um, don't be panicking about resources now. Just um, sort of stay with the status quo, even though that's not ideal for a number of people. Um, and those things will become clearer as these go through the process. Hi, Fiona, it's Alice. I've just got a, um, a question as well. Yes, um, yes. We were looking at, uh, so we don't have an outdoor ed program uh, yet here at Tauranga Girls College, but we were looking at uh, putting a course proposal together to get one up and running for next year. Are we uh, a year ahead of ourselves in doing this if, um, if um, it's not submitted to NZQA yet and, and the standards aren't out. Um, because with regards to the consent to assess, we've only got that for 467, 470 and 473. So just wondering, are we um, 
do we proceed and try and get this going through for next year at school or would it be best to wait another year? Uh, I would hope you could get it going um, for next year. If you want to plan it on these new standards, you could start doing um, kind of the work of, about seeing how they would fit together. Uh, really hopeful there won't be massive changes in that NCA, uh, NZQA process and it will just be They'll be picky probably about some of the wording we've used. We've, we've pushed the boundaries a little bit on some of this stuff. Um, so there might be a little bit of pushback around some of those things, but they're not gonna, well, I shouldn't say that, but I don't think they're gonna come back and say, you can't have that whole standard. Um, so I think you could start by kind of developing what your programs might look like and just hold off a little bit on the consent to assess part of it, but have your ideas about what your three programs would look like. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, it does, thank you so much. Perfect, thank you. No problem. Uh, so I thought before we um, pop off this overview, it might be good to look at this new area where all of the standards except for one are new. Um, this is the core area where we've pulled out what did exist across a whole lot of the unit standards um, to really try and work on decreasing that repetitive assessment load. Um, so again, hopefully this adds lots of flexibility. Uh, it does, you know, it, it is quite a big change from what people have been doing now. Um, so uh, hopefully uh, you can see how it could work in your programs. There's a couple of things to point out here. This is an existing uh, domain in Skills Active. Uh, I suspect very, very few schools would have consent to assess um, in this domain. This level three standard is an existing standard now. Uh, we haven't reviewed it, it's, um, it's not particularly that old and that's why it sits with five credits. Um, it's a, um, it hasn't been through this process of really trimming down um, credit values. We didn't uh, create anything in this level one space in this core area because uh, there is a whole bunch of standards that sit um, in the Māori environmental practices and their NZQA standards. So schools automatically have consent to assess. Um, they cover all sorts of really um, interesting um, little snippets of programs that you could put together. Um, and EONS will be promoting those out um, to schools as something that would be really useful um, in level one programs. And there's lots of potential in there. So. We didn't double up um, and create uh, anything new there. We did feel there was a space to create a new unit at level two. Um, so that one's sitting in there. It didn't go out for consultation with the rest because it still needed a wee bit of work and we were um, really trying to work on if we would create something at level one or not. Um, so that one is still coming out for consultation. It'll come out just by itself. Um, in the same way the other ones did. Uh, and the two others to point out here is this multi um, self-contained multi-day trip one in an outdoor context. Um, that's sitting in here and has a slightly higher credit value um, because it contains some evaluation, which none of the other practical unit standards do. Um, so it's bumped up that credit weighting a little bit. And when we were looking at credit weightings, uh, we're thinking very roughly about one credit being approximate to about 10 hours of learning. Um, so kind of helps you get your head around what sort of volume of learning um, might go with a standard. Um, and then it's the balancing act of trying to get like full programs within the 20 credit limit and balancing these standards or unit standards against achievement standard credit. So it's a, it's a real balancing act of trying to strike a happy medium. 
Uh, the other one in here is this one, um, which is working with others to lead school students in an outdoor activity. These ones here uh, really have their basis um, in what used to be the ABL domain. Um, but in looking at those ABL standards, you know, lots of um, the teachers on the group and you know, people around the um, country will be well aware that you can use the, those concepts across all sorts of outdoor activities. And so that's what we've allowed in here. You could keep on doing those in ABL um, as you used them before or low ropes, high ropes, um, or you could use them in a different context. So hopefully that's useful in there. Uh, just a quick overview um, of where we got to. So we started with just over 60 standards. Um, you'll see on the, the expiring list that was on that email, if you go into the link, there's 29 standards um, that are being put up for expiring. Um, and again, that'll be by the end of 2023. So still lots of time to use those expiring standards. Uh, 30 standards have been reviewed, and those are the ones with the existing numbers, with some quite radical and big changes um, in those existing numbers. So um, yeah, you definitely need to dwell, delve in and see what's in there. Um, and there's 15 new standards um, that have been created. So at level one, we've ended up with 12 unit standards uh, with credit values up to 29 credits. Level two, there's 18 standards, adding to credit values of 41, and 16 standards at level three to pick from, with credit values up to 43 credits. So hopefully when you look at those numbers, you can see there's tons of standards to pick from and still a, a lot of credits um, there to pick from and design your programs around. Any questions at that stage? There's a few questions in the chat. Oh, right. Oh, hang on, I'll just stop sharing and find my chat. Uh, Nick two. Nick, what was two four six six three? Uh, that was part of the ABL domain uh, demonstrating leadership while participating in program. I forget the exact name. Uh, I think that one might not have been. I'll double check and get back to you on that one. Um, Alice. Uh, so ABL. Um, yep, that's so the ABL context has been stripped out, but you can use those cores to deliver ABL um, in that uh, social development context. Uh, Chris, yes, sea kayaking um, fits within the paddling skills section. Uh, so there's a sea kayaking unit at, just let me get this right. Oh yeah, so they both fit in. Um, the, the, there's a unit at level two, um, demonstrate paddling skills on moving water and that moving water um, is either, oh, hang on, that's, a, that's cut across wrong. Yes is the answer. There's the wrong title in that um, overview. I have to correct that. Um, I'll just pull up the sea kayaking overview and then I can tell you exactly where that one fits. So it looks like. Um... Joe, sorry, jumping in here, Joe. Uh, you and I both do sea kayaking. We do ours currently on Lake Topol, um, 
at level two and level three. So I'm just wondering if that's still going to be able to fit in with um, the, the new standards. Yeah. So at level two, um, demonstrate paddling on moving water. Yep, that can definitely be done with the sea kayak in mind. Um, at level three, it is um, class two white water at this stage, um, but the group felt that the multi-day um, unit at level three could be used for sea kayaking, but that, that's not so easy if you're only doing sea kayaking um, as a day by day and not as a journey, obviously. Um, so it'd be interesting to hear from people that at level three, uh, where that multi-day journey one wouldn't work for your, for your sea kayaking or any of your cores wouldn't work um, as well. Because you could still use sea kayaking as a context um, with any of those cores. Um, the the one barrier, I guess, well, if you, with only one kayaking unit at level two, it does mean you can't do sea kayaking and assess sea kayaking in a practical um, sense and then do um, paddling on a river and assess that separately. So you've just got one paddling unit at level two. You have got a rolling unit that goes along with that as well. Um, but then there's nothing to say that you couldn't do both of those things, but um, use one of the cores for your assessment um, alongside that and still end up with six units uh, credits across those two things. Um, so can I just check then when it's kind of talking about moving water in that level two, then uh, the definition of moving water could be the sea, which obviously varies on how much it moves. Yes. So <laughs> there was a great discussion trying to define moving water. So the definition there at the moment and the guidance information is either class one rivers or coast waters with small swells and waves and or small to medium surf onto a beach. This type of water excludes open water in exposed conditions. So hopefully you can fit in all of your moving water <laughs> into there. Oh, so that would be Lake Topo then? I would say um, you would have uh, small swells and waves and yep. sometimes quite a lot bigger. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So definitely. Um, in fact, a really good point because we because it says coastal waters, but we can add lake waters in there for clarity, I think. Yeah, I think um you know my Dave I remember that discussion pretty good. Um can you hear me Steve? Yeah, I can. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I mean, if you're on the lake and you're kayaking along, uh, the moving water aspect is, you know, for the kayak would be catching waves and you'd be bracing and using turn rudders and things. So, actually using strokes that are required to stay upright and support strokes. So, it would definitely fit into what we can Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Oh, so um, yeah, achievement standards. Uh, no word yet, except that we, um, oh, for those that don't know, um, EONS has put a proposal into the Ministry of Education to try and get uh, outdoor ed um, recognized as a subject on the level two and three subject list. And that's the first step in working towards getting um, a matrix of achievement standards. Um, for outdoor education. Uh, our proposal has moved to the, the next step where the ministry do their own um, internal work and scope out a business plan um, 
to put to the minister and you know, he either approves or doesn't approve uh, outdoor education being on the subject list. Uh, we've got a reasonable chance, I think. We've, we've, we did the best we possibly could. They wanted three to four pages and we gave them about a hundred. Um, so <laughs> we're, we're just waiting to see. We should know within the next couple of months and then there is a process um, if we get on the subject list about uh, whether we get achievement standards and an achievement standard matrix. Um, already in conversation with Skills Active and Skills Active are really supportive around the concept of um, if we do get achievement standard matrix that maybe the cause that we've developed here could go over and become um, the basis for the achievement standards um, and the contexts would still sit um, with Skills Active. So that's kind of one of the reasons why it's really important to get the credits as, as um, comparable between the unit standards and achievement standards as we can and um, continue to work on being really flexible with how programs are put together. Um, okay. Ah, oh. oh, day boy, okay. Right. I think Dan, um, we need to have a wee think about uh, that sea kayaking and um, maybe we could have a chat offline about whether you think, and Joe, um, you might be the same if you're using sea kayaking at level three. Um, if you have a look at the cause and see whether the cause could work for you still to be able to do that, I'd be really interested in knowing that or whether there is something that we need to put in. Um, at because the there's another comment there that someone wrote about, you know, not charging fees. The last comment, we're the same. You know, we've decided to not charge any fees and do a localised curriculum. Right, yep. Yeah, and so, yeah, for us, that's a real consideration. We're not doing a lot of multi-day trips. We're doing more local stuff. Yep, yep. And, you know, that's a great consideration. You know, so um, we have to make sure the assessments allow you to do that, um, I think. Um, so... Do you two just want to have a, a wee dive into the cores in the next sort of week or two and get back to me around whether you think um, you'd, you could still deliver that day by day sea kayaking? Um, and that goes for anyone else on there that is using sea kayaking day by day at level three. It'd be great to hear from you. Probably within the next couple of weeks would be good because um, if we're going to um, put a new standard in, we need to get it in before they start going through um, the process. I have had a look at these and but I have to admit with the thousand emails I receive a day I've sort of forgotten where to look. Where do we go to find these and um, have another look? So the email you got um, well, it's pretty soon after you registered from me, so, in, so registered for this Zoom, on the bottom of that email um, there's a coloured piece that is a forward from Skills Active, and you should be able to push. And I see um, someone couldn't open the links via that email. Um, oh yeah, and and that email doesn't actually have the the overview document in it anyway. It only has the individual overviews of all the standards. Um, but let me know. Just email me if you can't open those links, and I'll follow up with. Um, with you, Chris, around getting you another copy of that. Um, so you should just be able to zip into the Skills Active email. The survey won't work, but it should upload all of the overviews um, and they're all on there. Oh, okay. Looks like a couple of people can't. Uh, maybe I will just attach them all to an email and send them out to you afterwards. <laughs> yeah, that'd be, that'd be great, thanks. Yeah, I'm trying it right now and it's not working. Yes, yeah, so that'd be cool. Did it work, did it work for anyone? Yeah, I found that I um, opened it up into the browser and then could click on them and it just downloaded it as a PDF onto my computer. Yeah, yeah, that's what it should do. Um, but yeah, I couldn't get them to open from directly in the email. I had to click on the open in web browser to get it to work. Oh, 
partner up. Mm -hmm. Good hint. Um, Chris and Alice, I'll send those through um, separately to you. If anyone else can't open them, just let me know. Um, otherwise, Joe's hint of opening it in the browser. Um, so I, I'll just check uh, for you, Nick, around that expiring standards here. The ABL question. Um, ah, yes. Two, four, six, six, three um, is down for expiring um, and being replaced by the working with others, the new um, one in the core. Um, so, yeah, the, that new one in the core just tidies up um, who it's actually for. Um, there was, there was a bunch of level three standards that were designed um, not for use with schools, but for use with uh, volunteer youth leaders, teachers, and that kind of um, assistant or leadership level before the leadership level went to level four. Um, and a number of schools ended up with them in their domains somehow or they're in, in their consent to assess. Um, so um, they'll, they'll just all automatically get expired, although I have used a couple of their numbers, um, but they look radically different in there. Um, a process from here, uh, touched on already, but um, from here, the overviews that you've looked at, um, each standard gets taken off the overview and put into um, what you would see when you download a standard from NZQA, uh, the format's slightly different to the ones these sit in and all that work gets done. Then they go off to NZQA along with a um, change report that outlines why things are changing and the expiring standards list. Uh, there's a little bit of back and forth probably, and then they get listed. Uh, at that stage, the um, consent to assess plan gets worked out and um, all the schools with consent to assess will find out about that um, through that Skills Active pathway. Uh, and then um, you'll also have a time frame then about when these standards will be ready for use. And really, um, as soon as they're up on the framework, um, they're ready for use, except for uh, any assessment resources need to be pre-moderated if you're designing them themselves, or the, pre the assessment resources need to be created. Um, at the moment, EONS is just starting conversations with Skills Active about how we might do that. Um, EONS is really keen to uh, design and create a set of resources, and we're pretty committed to doing that, um, but we will need uh, your help and your ideas. We want to create resources for the unit standard or assessment resources for the unit standards, but also some ideas of um, innovative programs and ways of putting them together. So um, some really good examples about how you might um, use the different combinations um, together. Uh, and of course, the aim would be to have those um, created, pre-moderated and ready to go um, for you for the start of next year. Um, it's always good to have lofty goals. Uh, and obviously, um, yeah, we'll be looking for people to be involved in that process uh, with all your ideas and thoughts on that. Sorry, Sorry Fiona, can I jump in there and ask um, the yeah. question? Can those resources that you're looking at making um, assessment resources will we need to purchase those like we do currently from skills active or are they going to be free for us to access uh they won't be free um because there'll be a cost in a uh, one a cost in developing them but also an ongoing cost in um 
getting them pre-moderated and then keeping them up to date. Um, but we will, if, if EONS ends up owning the IP for those resources, and that's a conversation that we're having at the moment, um, then we'll definitely be looking at making sure that it's uh, basically cost recovery um, so that we, we get enough um, back that we can maintain them and improve them over time and keep them moderated. Um, so probably look like the consortium um, did for those people that was involved in the consortium EONS ran um, for its members, um, something along those lines with a um, just a, a smaller cost. And I don't think it would be a um, per student cost or anything like that just enough to be able to maintain them through. Definitely looking at making sure it's reasonable for people or for schools. Cool, thank you. No problem. Um, so I think that's all I kind of had to share at this stage. Um, really keen on any questions or any feedback Uh, you, achievement standards and unit standards. Um, uh, unit standards are, or what's the difference, uh, why the difference in cost and availability? Um, unit standards, the resources and the standards are created um, for industry, theoretically, um, and schools use those in their vocational pathway. Um, so there is a cost and they're not funded in the same way as achievement standards are. So achievement standards, there's still, um, you know, the cost to developing those is still the same um, across both platforms, but basically the Ministry of Education uh, fund achievement standard development moderation and all the processes that go around those, whereas um, the ITOs and going forward who um, the workforce development councils uh, get a different level of funding and actually they get no funding um, for developing standards for schools. So it'll be the same if you go across to hospitality and they're using industry unit standards, they'll pay for their resources um, out of for hospitality unit standards. Um, some unit standards, um, it's, it's a bit of a mixed picture because some unit standards are owned by NZQA, um, like the Māori um, environmental practices ones. Um, they are actually, they're not industry standards as such, so they don't have the same consent to assess and same costs associated with them. It's definitely not clear cut. Okay, any other questions, comments, feedback? Um, it's great to hear about the sea kayaking. If there's anything else in there that um, you're having an allergic reaction to, um, need to know. <laughs> there wasn't a lot of feedback through um, the Skills Active feedback um, system. So, you know, now's the time. Actually, now's past the time, but you can still have your say. <laughs> okay, um, if there's nothing else, I'll uh, 